Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with Nottingham Forest. We are six games in to the second season in the Championship and uh, you know who's going alright at the end of last season? It's not going so well now. Since the last episode we've been knocked out of the Carabao Cup thanks to a 3-1 defeat against Millwall and they got a player sent off as well and then scored all three of their goals once their player got sent off. So we opened the scoring on 44 minutes. Joe Lolly with the goal. Then Charlie Wyke with a hat-trick on 75, 79 and 90 minutes. After Andrea Bertolacci, maybe, gets himself sent off for two yellow cards. We were the better team. We dominated the game and we lost. There's a theme with this. And it's the same theme that we had when we were at Southampton as well. Up against Swansea, it was a 1-0 defeat, Jordan Ayo with the goal. This one doesn't quite fit the theme, as they did batter us, but we did have a lot of possession here. And then a 0-0 draw against Sheffield United with 18 shots, 6 on target, 8 fouls, not that that makes any difference, 57% possession as well, and 0 goals to show for it. Up against Sheffield Wednesday, we lose this one 2-1. We were 1-0 up after just one minute. Matty Cash with the goal. Then late on in the second half, very late on, Sam Winnell and Maim Duff score two goals for Sheffield Wednesday. We had nine shots, 61% possession, just the one goal. Admittedly, Sheffield Wednesday did have more shots than us, but they all came in the last about 15 minutes of the game. And the final match was up against Scunthorpe. It was a 2-2 draw. Ben Osborne and Matty Cash with the goals for us. Adam Idar and Freddie Sears with the goal for Scunthorpe. 14 shots, 63% possession. Two goals to show for it, but defending like a sieve. So that shambolic set of results leaves us currently in 17th place in the table. Six games played. We need to get some wins. Today we're going to have two matches. I can't remember who they're against. I think they're going to be good sides. Norwich, who are 10th. Fulham, who are 20th. How are Fulham 20th? I don't know, but they are way, way down the table at the moment. There's a bit of transfer news to talk about as well. You might remember from the last episode that we were trying to shift on Lewis Graben and we have successfully done that for £1.5 million. The 31-year-old English striker has left and has gone to Rangers and has already scored a goal in the Europa League for Rangers, so good on him. Also, Liam Bridcut, the 30-year-old Scottish ball-winning midfielder, has gone out on loan to St Mirren, also in the Scottish Premier Division. They are paying some of his wages, but they're not paying all of it, but it was just enough so they're paying uh, £3,000. So we're still paying £12,000 a week for him, but we're getting some money as well every time he plays or doesn't play. Basically, I just wanted to get him off the books. He's getting paid too much money, and he wasn't really going to get into our team. Also, my head of youth development has signed this piece of junk, Ben Tricker. Tricker, sure. Uh, technically, he's got so many ones there, that's ridiculous. It's like binary, his uh, technical abilities. One at corners, one at crossing, one at dribbling, one at finishing, one at free kick taking, one at long shots, one at long throws, one at penalty taking as well. Not so bad considering he's a defender, but when you think his heading is eight, marking is ten, he's pretty god awful, and I don't know why my head of youth development decided to sign him. So, yeah, that's kind of it. The transfer window, I think, is closed, or maybe we've got another couple of days. We've got another couple of days to go. I don't think anything's going to happen between now and then. We have got 14 days to wait until the next match because I'm an idiot and actually didn't press continue. So I'll see you in a minute when we are going to have the Norwich question mark game? Norwich game. Norwich game, yes. One thing I did forget to mention, I always seem to do this, is look at our finances. We've fixed the problems by shifting on all of those players. So we're now £15 million in profit. We are underneath our wage budget by £9,000 as well. So... We do have a little bit of a leeway to maybe sign someone. Can we get someone on loan? We might be... We've only got Vokin to Obafemi on loan. I'm going to have a look on the loan market. We have done some transfer business. Two loan signings have come in on loan deadline day. First up, 19-year-old English central defender from Aston Villa. Jacob Badeau has signed. He's come in on a rotation deal, only £1,900 a week. His determination is dramatically lower than what it really should be. He looks like a decent player. Looks like he has some potential. Maybe I can actually get him into some form of uh, the mentoring groups and maybe push up his determination a little bit. And the other one is somebody a little bit better, somebody with a bit more pedigree to his name. Mohamed Besic, the 27-year-old Bosnian ball in a midfielder on loan from Everton, spent last season on loan at Middlesbrough. Uh, last season or two years on loan at Middlesbrough? Really? Two years at Middlesbrough? Yes, two years at Middlesbrough. Now, you might be thinking, Stuart, you've signed someone who's not English. Wrong, he's English. Somehow, Besic is English. I don't know how he's English, but he is. I guess he's been here long enough? 
He's only been here since 2014. He's not been here for that long. But yeah, Besic counts as English, so good. We don't need to worry about actually, like, basically, he can play, unlike uh, Danny Goncalves. Make sure I register them as well. Hopefully they've gone in. Besic is in. The other guy doesn't need to because he's only nine years old. Now we've got to wait for 12 days until we play Norwich. Welcome back to the Skybet Championship. Welcome back to the city ground. Today we're up against Norwich and it'll be a return for Claudio Jakob because that's where he went. He went to Norwich apparently. Three points here could actually see us rise up to sort of ninth, tenth position. Obviously all results can't go our way. So three points might put us around 12th, 13th, which would be great, particularly as we're going to be playing Fulham in two more days time. So uh, two wins here would be really handy. I suspect what's likely to happen is two defeats and we'll probably be sat around 20th or 21st. The starting lineup we're going to go for then against Norwich in goal will be Costel Pantilamon. The back four will be Dariqua, Worrell, Hefele and Jake Vokins. Besic will be making his first start in Nottingham Forest colours as that register just behind Ryan Yates. And Panagiotis, Joe Lolly and Ben Osborne are going to be the wingers today with Michael Oberfemi being the lead striker. That's a risk, but every time I say it, strikers don't score goals, so I feel like it's kind of irrelevant. On the bench, Jacob Badal is also on there, Rucker is on there, Eric Exposito is on there. This man's name, Ahmed Hodzic, who I think he actually played, yeah, he came off the bench one game, actually didn't do too bad. He's not great, I think I played him as the register as well. So yeah, he's probably actually a half-decent register if he could actually take long shots and dribble and have some flair and off the ball and just be generally a better footballer. A very attacking formation for Norwich then with a 4-2-3-1. Is that Timu? Is that his name? Timu Pucky is the striker. I think he's quite good. He's actually not as good as I was expecting. He's fast. That's probably about it. So hopefully we can get a victory here. I'm just getting the assistant to do the uh, the, the team talk there. And look, at I've just seen the difference in the size of our captain and our goalkeeper. I know Pantilamon's big, but that's ridiculous. Panagiotis has suffered a neck strain almost instantly in this match. That's really not useful. We're 15 minutes in, no highlights so far, but we are getting our shots away, although they look like they're from well outside the area. 10 minutes to go of the first half. We've had zero highlights. We're getting shots. Six shots now, not a single highlight. Vokins with a throw. Besic heads back to Jake Vokins, the Southampton youngster. Comes inside, across to Yates, back to Panagiotis. Yates gets the ball again. Joe Lolly. Yates goes for goal, and Ryan Yates gets his fourth goal of the season. Our goals seem to come from central midfield or the wingers. That's not how football works, but I'm gonna. I'm okay with it. Another highlight straight away. Let's zoom the camera in a little bit more. It's gone to uh, Lolly. Lolly's running in on goal straight at Tim Kroll. Well, there's actually two very good goalkeepers in this match. Tim Kroll and Costel Pantilamon. Two very good goalkeepers for this level of football. Half time, we have the lead. Ryan Yates with the only goal, but we've been all over them, which probably means they're going to score two goals in the second half, and we're going to lose 2 1. Although, if I'm clever enough, about 75 minutes if we still have the lead, I'm going to drop back from being positive to being defensive and hopefully that should hope shut up shop a little bit. Just before the hour mark, the first highlight of the second half, the two Southampton youngsters combining, Vokins with the ball, Panagiotis, Yates, Michael Oberfemi holds up the ball back to Yates, Panagiotis again, Besic, Vokins a bit of space on the left hand side if he can cross in, he does cross in and Yates was there but didn't go for the ball. And now Fox can get it clear. Is that Danny Fox or is that a different Fox? Besic, Yates, Panagiotis. Loses the ball in his own feet somehow. Gets the ball back from Osborne. Panagiotis back to Osborne. Vokins is making a run behind him. What a what vision that was from Osborne to find him. Panagiotis in the area. Goes for goal. The keeper makes a questionable save. It is going to be a corner. We should be 2-0 up there. That was a golden opportunity to score a goal. Osborne's corner comes in. It's deep. It's cleared. Besic, edge of the area. Finds Joe Lolly in the area. Across to Panagiotis. Kroll makes a save. It is another corner. We are all over them. We are all over them at the moment, and we are not going to score because this is how this game works. Osborne's corner comes in. Besic gets it. Back to Osborne. There's three still in the box. Crosses in. Yates is one. He's gone down under the tackle. The ball is cleared by Tim Closer. Vokens heads forward, and Hefele, what a shocking header that was. And luckily, somebody was offside or there was a foul or something. Right, Oberfemi is going to come off. We're going to bring on Eric Exposito. Jake Vokens, I think, is having a ridiculously good game at the moment. Not going to do any other changes than that. 15 shots, 6 on target. They've had one. We are probably still going to lose this game. We've got 20 minutes to play. 
on 75, we are going to go defensive. Osborne's corner. Worrell is there. Worrell's hit the bar. Hefele has put it in. It is 2-0 now to Nottingham Forest. Michael Hefele, his first goal of the season. And now we are definitely going to be going into that defensive mentality and hopefully shutting up shop and having a very boring final 15 minutes of the game. 10 minutes to go. Osborne gets the ball. Vokins to Besic. Panagiotis Osborne again on the left. Runs forward with a ball. Bit of space to run into. Keeps going across to Lolly. Joe Lolly's going to take it out wide. Waiting for Dariqua. First time we've seen him all game. Dariqua stops. Crosses it in. Panagiotis on the volley. It is over the bar from the Greek international. Corner for Norwich with eight minutes to play. Hefele can clear it. We've only got Eric Exposito up there. He's running forward. He's got no support at all. He's gone for goal from distance. There wasn't a lot else he could have done, but that probably wasn't the best decision. Three and a half minutes to play now. We are going to do some subs. I'm going to bring off Vokins for Rucker so he can get his round of applause. Yates is also going to come off. No, he's not. He's going to stay on. We're going to bring off. What are we going? I've... Why are you on the bench? What what purpose do you serve? You can play just behind the striker and maybe a left... Right, you're coming on as a left winger. You're going to come on there. You can't really do it, but what difference does it make? There is three and a half minutes to play. Corner for Norwich. Emmy takes it. Tim Close is there. And Costel Pantilamon has got holes in the middle of his gloves. We are... Don't throw this away now. They've had how many shots? Four. Three on target and scored one goal. We've had 21. Eight on target, scored two goals. They're going to equalise here, aren't they? Panagiotis clears. Cummings chase it down. Emmy gets it to Fox. Lolly misses. In the area, Dariqua can't get the ball either. And they hit it just wide of the post. It is a goal kick. Pantilamon, the giant of a man, is going to take it. Hits it to Joe Worrell. Is this the final highlight of the game or are they going to actually score a goal or are we going to score a goal? Exposito plays it to... What was that? What was that, Eric? We are trying to hold on to this lead and you're there just kicking the ball out and giving them the ball back. Joe, uh, what's happened there? Joe Lolly's pushed someone over. Just hold on. We are 94 minutes. We are wasting so much time. The ball gets kicked over, the, over to the other side of the pitch. It doesn't matter. We have held on. We should have destroyed them. I don't understand. We are having so many shots. We've had eight on target. Tim Crow gets a 6.7. From what I saw, he should have got a nine. He made about three wonderful saves. Ryan Yates, once again, is the star for us. He is easily one of our best players. An average rating is 7.44 at the moment. We are now up into 12th place in the table. Our second win of the season. Nine points, another win. And if results go our way, could put us all the way up into 6th place. But that's not technically possible because Fulham... We'll say Fulham. Uh, some of these teams will definitely pick up points as well in the middle. So up next, Fulham in about two days' time. Three days' time. The number's down there. Welcome back. It is Tuesday night. We are in London for our match against Fulham at Craven Cottage. Scott Parker, the Fulham manager. Is he actually Fulham manager? Is that a real thing? Have I missed something? No, he's a coach at Fulham. In this game, he has been promoted to be Fulham manager. Not a terrible manager, really, for this level of football. The starting lineup we are going to go for then against Fulham in goal will be Costel Pantilamon. The back four of Dariqua, Worrell, Hefele and Vokins will remain the same. Besic keeps his place as that supporting regista. Ryan Yates and Ben Osborne will be the two central midfielders. Michael Oberfemi has moved out to be the inside forward on the right-hand side. Joe Lolly is the winger on the left. And Zach Clough has come in to be the striker today. On the bench, we do have Jonathan Berthwood, the youngster who is now 17 years old. He is loan listed. Hopefully, some decent level club, and by decent level, I mean League One, comes in to loan him. Uh, so far, Boreham Wood have come in for him, and I've said no, I want you to be playing at a higher level. Uh, so Jonathan Burford is on the bench because he can play as that winger or as a striker if we need him. We've also got Eric Exposito, uh, Tobias Figueiredo, Rooker, Jacob Bedo, and Toby Edster. I don't know who Toby Edster is. I don't know why he's on the bench. Get off the bench, Toby. Ben Watson is on the bench now. Now, you'll probably realise I don't often pick my subs bench. I normally just get the assistant to pick the subs bench. I pick the starting eleven. And that is about it, hence why we get some really stupid players on the bench. Anyway, let's jump into the Fulham game and hopefully we can win our second game in as many days. It's not in as many days, is it? We've, there's been like three or four days in between. Let's see if we can win our second match of the episode. Our second match in four days. It's probably more accurate. Fulham, obviously a team that have just been relegated from the Premier League, so they will probably be very good. What a tackle that was from Dariqua. 12 seconds in, in onto Ryan Sessegnon. So yeah, Fulham have gun, are going to have a really good side. Very, very well-paid side as well, if I remember correctly. 
16 minutes in, Ajaria has gone off injured and Johansson has come on. Clough's corner. Hefele has rattled the bar and we're going to get another corner. Michael Hefele has had a decent effort there. Is he going to do the same thing again? Zach Clough takes the corner, tries to find the front post this time. Besic, back to Clough, please. Does use the youngster. Besic again. I say youngster. He's probably about 27. Besic passing it, finds Yates. Gets the ball back. Joe Lolly. Michael Oberfemi is miles offside at the moment. Osborne, Besic. Vokens has got acres of space. If somebody can find him, it's gone all the way back to Worrell. And the highlight just stopped. What? We had the ball in an attacking area. We didn't do anything with it. Seri with a free kick for Fulham. Adoy's there. He's hit the post and Dariqua can clear it. This is a bit of a mess so far. Johansson with a free kick for Fulham. It is gone whistling past the left-hand post of Costel Pantilamon. And there's another free kick. Seri this time takes it. Sessegnon back to Seri. He's got two players on him. Sessegnon gets the ball back. Adoy. Benat. Adoy again, Kearney a bit of space, runs out wide, goes for goal, he doesn't go for goal, he crosses it in, jean Mikel Seri with the goal, assisted by Tom Kearney, his third goal of the season, very much so against the run of play, or was it? It wasn't really, we should have actually capitalised on our chances earlier. Half time, we are 1-0 down, I'm just going to get the assistant to do the team talk, Michael Oberfemi is making mistakes for fun. So, we're going to do Rucker on, and we're going to swap those two over. Rucker can't really play as that winger, but, you know, he's probably better than Michael Oberfemi is. Oh, great, Osborne's injured. Did I just completely miss that? What's up with Osborne? Potential thigh injury. Right, you can, you can run it off, probably. 67 minutes in, and nothing is happening at all. We're getting some chances. Uh, Osborne's going to have to come off for Ben Watson... Burford is going to come on as well for uh, Zach Clough. That is all of our subs made. There's not a lot happening. We're just going to lose this one 1-0. One we're going to go out with a bit of a whimper. So we're going to stick it on attacking. Watson with a free kick. Plays it towards Besic. Besic is there. And that has gone centimetres wide of the post. We've got nine minutes to play. And I don't think anything's going to happen. Rucker with a free kick. Number 90. It's gone deep, but it's cleared. Rucker's going to get the ball back. Forward to Joe Lolly, two in the area. If he can cross in, he finds Rucker instead. Rucker to Yates. Yates has hit a player. Joe Lolly has scored, but he was offside. Joe Lolly is offside. He's celebrating. I don't know why you're still celebrating. It was obvious you were offside. Two minutes to play. This is going to be Fulham's first win in a very long time, and it's going to be disappointing because, as you can see, once again, we've probably been the better side. Five shots on target, 11 in total. More possession only slightly, and we're going to go 1-0 down to Fulham in a match where we didn't deserve to lose again. And uh, this happens far too often. This isn't a, yeah, but these things happen in, in football. They do happen. Not every week. So that defeat does mean that we sit now in 15th place, although Newcastle, Reading also have a game to play. So we are probably going to drop down to 16th, maybe 17th place, depending on results. Because um, I don't know, I'm assuming... Well, I'm hoping they're playing each other. I don't think they will be. Um, yeah, so we might drop down to 17th place, which actually is worse than where we were at the start of the episode, isn't it? Ben Osborne is out for five to eight days as well. That is not good. And uh, Joe Lolly is going to... We're going to have to pay £250,000 for Joe Lolly soon, which, fine, it's probably worth it. The Newcastle and the Reading games have now taken place. Reading losing 1-0 to Millwall, Newcastle beating Hull 4-0. So we've dropped down to 16th place. But Newcastle's victory has moved them from 16th to 10th. So it's still very close in there. One victory will put us on 12 points, which could put us all the way up into 10th place. We are a long, long way off of Blackburn and arguably Derby. Although Derby, again, not that far away. Blackburn are just running away with it. So I don't think we're out of it yet. It just doesn't look particularly promising, what with these three defeats and three draws early on in the season. Next episode, we are going to have two of the big guns in the league. We're going to have Derby County on the 22nd of October. And we're going to have table topping Blackburn on the 26th of October. It is not going to be an easy episode. In between, we are going to have five league games in total. Preston, Ipswich, Bradford, Cardiff and Brentford. Looking at the league positions, Preston shouldn't beat them. Ipswich we should, Bradford we should, Cardiff and Brentford may be a draw against them. That's kind of the ideal result there, so... By the time you see the next episode, we should have an extra six, seven, eight points. That's my target for the next five games. Oh, wait. Last time I had a target of eight points, I got sacked. Let's not set myself a points target. 
Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2019 with Nottingham Forest. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you tomorrow, hopefully, with the Derby County and the Blackburn Rovers games.